a lot of photographers aren't shy, and in fact, photographers in a way should be shy. And uh, if I may name drop, uh, as the great Terry Richardson or the great Terry O'Neill was saying to me recently, that it was Frank Sinatra, if I may name drop again. <laughs> but I guess Terry was name dropping to me. He said Frank Sinatra taught him the greatest lesson he ever learned about photography, which was that you should be invisible as a photographer. And uh, I think, in a way, that's kind of um, that's what a, a shy person brings to it all. Anyway, the other thing that um, I like about Kit as a photographer is that, you know the way everyone's an artist now? Like, the chef making your burger is an artist. You know? <laughs> and the food you get in the restaurant is placed on the plate as, as art. And God knows a lot of the people I work with who are kind of hack writers and photographers, they are all artists. And you approach them, you ring them up to ask them to do something. And you're all like, if you wouldn't mind, you're giving them work, you know, in a tough environment. But if you wouldn't mind, is there any chance that you would go and do this puff interview with somebody? It'll take you five minutes, and I know you'll knock it out in an hour, and I'll pay you a load. And they're kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I'm in the mood and all this. And everyone is an artist these days. And actually, I'm tired of artists myself, and I'm much more interested in what I think Kip is, which is an artisan. Um, I agree. Firstly, who's that? I'm a shy person. <laughs> Firstly, uh, I think Kip is an artisan, because when you ring Kip and you go, Kip, I have a really shit job, would you mind doing it? Grant, when is it? And it's in, actually in Timbuktu, and you need to be there in order. Grant, yeah, okay, we'll do it. And, and, and that's it, and he goes and he does it. And it's not in any way to suggest that, that to diminish his work or anything, but like, it's not all about Kip, and it's about, like, okay, there's a job to be done, and I'll go and do it. And I actually think that artists are on the way out, and artisans are on the way back in. If you look at one of the greatest artists in the world right now, possibly the greatest film actor ever, Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis is creating amazing pictures and everything, but what does he actually want to do? He wants to make shoes. He wants to make cabinets, because I think he recognises that creating something is, is true creativity. And I think the difference... In, if you look at these pictures, the reason that you can see that they're made by an artisan and not made by an artist is because an artist, in a way, would be saying, what does all this say about me, and trying to imprint themselves on the world. But I think Kip, being an artisan, just comes along and just wants to let the light of all these beautiful things in these beautiful places shine through whatever his lens is and everything, but it's not actually about Kip imprinting himself on the world. And I think, really? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> I think, I think it's not me, it's the subject. Yeah, I think the difference between a, an artist and an artisan is that an artist is trying to, in a way an artist is always trying to find himself, right? Whereas an artisan is just trying to create something something beautiful. And I saw a great quote in, you know that philosopher John Gray, not the men are from Mars, women are from Venus, the straw dollars guy. Someone asked him recently, so like, something along the lines of what is the meaning of life, or you know, how do we find ourselves? And he said, you know, there's all these people going around trying to find their true selves and all this. But actually, that's not where it's at. Where it's at, because probably, presumably because, I don't know, is there any true self? Like, there's yourself when you're a child, there's yourself in different stages of adulthood or whatever. But what he said, where it's at, just try and have an interesting life. And that's the meaning of life. And actually, I think in these pictures, it re represents, instead of Kip going off as a tortured artist trying to find himself on the slopes of the Himalayas, uh, he went off to try and have an interesting life. And, in fact, uh, he, brought, he brought it back here and captured all this beauty and brought it back for us to see so that we don't have to bother trying to have interesting eyes ourselves. I think he went out and he found beauty and, and he brought it back here. And, and, and again, he's, I don't think he... In, in the, the Waking Hours thing he did for us at the weekend, with, with a characteristic kind of understatement, he didn't try to explain the meaning of this trek or this journey, what it was all about or anything. What he said was, uh, I went for a long walk. I don't know what I was looking for, but it was very refreshing. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know what we're all looking for from these pictures either, but they certainly are. They're very, very beautiful, and I think we all agree they're 
very refreshing. So uh, I'm delighted to declare the exhibition open.